No, I told you I didn't know. All right. Here we go. We're doing the cam. These guys came out early this morning. Marshall's sleeping. Marshall was sleeping. We let the air out of the tire so we could reach in there better. But uh, that's the truck. They couldn't get the tires off. I guess the tires were rusted on. They were beating on those. Yeah. Tires rotate like they do with I deal. I I I dealt with that with that Equinox man. I beat on that thing forever. I got some of that penetrating stuff. You want to pour that on there? But he took the upper and lower shroud out. It looks like. He took the intake off, and now he's got the bolts out of the water pump. There's just two or three on each side, I believe. How many was on each side? Yeah, you need to take that all the way off. I left the intake on. It's getting in the way. I would have undone the lines from the pump itself, not just the radiator. But. Boom. <coughs> Yeah, it looks like there were three on the passenger side yeah, and three on the well, we driver's could, side. Get to these, it was back in here. And then that just pulls right off. And that's really all you don't got to take all this accessory stuff off because you can get to it after that. The next thing, I guess, is to pull the, uh, the damper balancer and then pull the timing cover. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happened? He dropped the screwdriver down there. We found the uh, screwdriver on the tire. Was it? <laughs> That's that was you. Why would you put it on top of the tire? No, they weren't exactly on top. It was on top of the A arm, but well, that's all right. I got it. But we never did put it back. I thought he was going to put it back together and drive it to work for a couple of days, but he decided against that. So he already took the rock arms back off this side. I think it's antifreeze, isn't it? What? Coming out of that. It's green. But uh, we'll get on the harmonic balancer <laughs> here in a minute. Me. But yeah, since I got out here late, they took the. The accessory belt off, which is uh, that's the tensioner right there. You just put a bolt in that, and, or put a socket or on that, and turn it, and it'll loosen the belt up and take it off. You gotta take the AC belt off too, and there's a tensioner for it too down there. But he had a hard time getting to the heater hose for the water pump. Heater hose is on the back side. So he took the pump off, and now he's taking the heater hoses off. Tempting too. And it looks like the main reservoir comes down into the heater hoses too. Huh, I didn't know it routed like that. I don't like I don't like those types of radiators though. I like the older kind with the cap on the radiator. They're easier to bleed in my opinion. But yeah. You gotta take your heater hoses off. Your hoses for the radiator, upper and lower shroud, the belt for the pulleys, for your accessories, and then the belt for the air conditioner is a separate one for that. And we're going to try to pull the cam out without taking the radiator out. And I've seen that done before on some videos, so we'll see how that goes. All right, so the water pump's off. It's pushing the socket up. And now this, uh, well, we'll change the position now the bolt don't want to come out of the balancer. We hit it with an impact, and the impact wasn't getting it out. So we're going to try this tire iron and a breaker bar. Make sure so now that thing is on. This? Yeah, make sure it's in there good. Make sure that bar's not up against something that's going to break like an oil pan, too. It's always too. bracket, though, right here. Yeah, it looks yeah, like it, it is. Gonna, it ain't going to do that, though. That bolt does not want to come off. We hit it with the, my big impact. My big impact. That impact right there. Would not break it loose. And that impact's got some heavy over here. Right? Got some power to it. Let me get out of the way. Oh my God, that's tight. Huh? That's so tight. We're going to fight with this, I guess. It's never easy. <laughs> How much money? All right, they finally got it out of there. How much money did you save for them? So, um, what's that sitting in the crank? It goes so, in the crank, yeah. So, uh, we had to take we had to take part of the jack apart and use it for a breaker bar. And we put that, um, we put that, um, that's right, Austin, right there. That crowbar, I forget what those are called, tire wrench, whatever. We put that in there. 
and we had it on the back side up against the bracket on this. And you don't yeah. want to make sure it's on the oil paint or anything. Tabs, right? yeah, we used that breaker bar, and I tell you, this one's long enough, huh? that big old boy there, he pulled on it, and it finally broke loose. Had to get we broke it loose, and then we put the impact back on it, and it came off. You bit the bejesus out of that. Huh? And now we're going to put... <laughs> you had to put it back in there. <laughs> <laughs> it was already bent one way, but yeah, it's but bent it's... two ways now. <laughs> <laughs> now we're putting this tool on there. That tool goes in there. There's a little pin that goes down in the crank hole. And, right there. and then there's notches like on the back of the, oh, okay. the, back of the yeah, balancer, whatever you want to call that thing, pulley. And then you put those three prongs on those lot notches and um, tighten up your bolt and it should no, spin really it off. Good. Hopefully the impact will fit in there. Oh, if it well, don't, then we'll just, use a, uh, we'll just use a wrench for the breaker bolt. I think so. Uh, you got it on all three of them? I think so. No. The rod might be too short. Looking like it. Yeah, you gotta move me. Yeah, yeah, you gotta move the rod. It's starting to grab there. There it is. Yeah, we just have to watch it. Go ahead and try it there until it bottoms out anyway. Now the impact definitely ain't gonna That's fit exactly. there. I don't know. I'd say it's three quarter. Pull it bigger. Put three quarter on there. Nineteen, eighteen. You'll have to uh, have to hold that harmonic balancer still. Yeah, it's gonna spin. Unless it hits that piston stop, you left that piston oh, stop in there. Yeah. You took the piston stop out. This one. That wouldn't be a good out, idea huh? anyway. Well, bust the piston. Yeah, we thought about that. We got three extra wrenches. Get over here. Yeah. Oh, they got the bent too. Yeah. yeah, I bent that one a long time ago. <laughs> no. I forgot how I bent that one. That's the third one's on there. All my tools are bent. No. Putting the power on them. Yeah, third one's just barely off. I am not going to roll off. Oh, it never slipped one on me, man. I need that bar. Huh? Don't wait. Just go until you can't go no more. That's pulling. Oh, well, I thought that'd be the hard part. It's pulling no, it right out of there. Pulling. Easy with just a three. Don't run out of there. there. It's hard to put this one wrong. It? With just a three eighths inch ratchet. But he needs a longer rod, but we're, we'll do it until it bottoms out anyway. Maybe if it bottoms out, it'll be enough to pull it off the hand. We'll see. But we put the uh, pull it up we put the tire iron back in there, so I'd keep the uh, balancer from spinning, pulley balancer, whatever, whatever that's called on an LS. But yeah, he barely got that bottom one on there. But it's What's pulling out. Pulling it, oh, pulling it out easy. None of my LT ones uh -huh. come off that easy. I tell you that. But yeah, we'll go ahead and pull that off, and then we'll take the timing cover off, and then uh, take the. Um, hey, Austin, you can put your ratchet around the end of that. I know. This is timing gear off, and then we'll spin the cam real good. He's still got the push rods in the motor. We're going yep. to take those well, you out. Got Austin right there. All right, we got he got the crank out, and now we're just taking the uh, timing cover bolts the off. Up, and there's just a huh? few around the. Outside of it, a couple on the bottom. You just take all those out, and then the timing cover will pop right off. The bottom that balancer there. pulley came off easy. That bolt did not come off easy. What'd you do? Oh, yeah, here it is. So that stuff on the back of that bolt, it acts like glue. You don't let it come off. I mean, that was, that was a pain. All right. Got the timing cover off. Now we're going to break the cam bolts loose and leave them in there and then we're going to line it up mark to mark, dot to dot. Crank at 12 o'clock, the cam dot at 6 o'clock.
And that's what we're doing now. And then we'll take the cam sprocket all the way off. Then we gotta take the push rods off, put the water pump bolts in the cam, spin it real hard, and put those uh, pins in. Tyler actually had the pins that are meant to hold the lifters up, so that he bought. He had the tool that we needed to, he bought to pull it off. But that's where we're at now. All right, there we go. So now we took the cam, we lined it up dot to dot, the crank, the crank gear at 12 o'clock, the cam gear at six o'clock, dot to dot. And that crank gear, the dot on it is really hard to see if you don't have a lot of light. Don't spin it yet. I want to spin it hard once we get the push rods out. And then you take your cam bolts out. You don't go. Spin you take the cam gear back off the dowel pin, bring it down, and take the chain off of it because we're not going to... We're not going to fool with the oil pump. We're going to leave the cam gear, the crank gear, uh. <laughs> the same. And the time, we're not changing the timing set or anything like that. But Which would probably be a good idea to do. I know on I, on small block Chevys, that's a good thing to do anytime you're in here. But I guess there's something about these LS motors where you don't want to fool with the oil pump too oh, much. Oh, 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 oh. Seals and stuff, <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, we're taking the cam retainer plate off now. And then what we're going to do is we're going to stick the water pump bolts into the cam. We're going to take the push rods out and we're going to spin that cam real fast. Not Don't spin it slow. Spin it real fast so it pushes them lifters up real hard. Real hard. But that's where we're at now. We're just taking the cam retaining plate off that holds the cam in and does the end plate for the cam off the step nose of the cam. But that's where we're at now. There's a little pit, little seat right. I see that, yeah. So, pull it out. we put the water pumps and bolts in the cam, took the push rods out, we spun the cam over. The cam doesn't spin as good as uh, it should, I would think, but our our pins, these are the actual pins that are made for this, are hitting the radiator, so we're going to have to take the radiator out. Just cut them. So, you got your hoses, which are already off because you took the water pump out, and then now you got to take the transmission lines out. Pretty much. And take the transmission lines out. There's a little, there's a little metal clip in between there, which it's hard to see. So if you get a screwdriver, if you find the bottom of that clip and push up on it and get one of those dental pick tools, and then stick in the hole in one of these loop parts, you can pull it out. But try not to drop it, because man, them things are easy to lose. But this oh, piece no. right here oh, goes no. up over that clip and holds the clip on. No, you just pull no, that no, off. But um, there's there's an open end on these clips. If you put a little small screwdriver in there and push up on that a little bit, it'll give you enough room to open up the top of these loops to put one of them picks in. And sometimes you can do it with your finger, but I can't seem to get a hold of the bottom of his. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and pop those off with the transmission line at the top and one down there at the very bottom. It's got to come off. And then this overflow hose has to come off for the radiator. This overflow hose it goes over here, but uh, we're going to take the radiator out, and hopefully we don't have to take the condenser out. So here's the clip. So like I said, if you kind of get a screwdriver in there and push on the bottom part, it'll open. It'll bring these loop top parts up, and if you put a, a small screwdriver or one of those toothpick things in there, dental picks you can grab it and pull it out and once you do that it just pops right out just like that so, so that one's out and when you put them back on you i can go ahead and put this on you can put it back on and, and then just push the line into it and it locks into it so you really don't have to fight with it when you put them back on you can put them back on before you put the hose back in. You just put them back on and then push the hose in. And the hose will expand it and then pass by it and then it clips on to that back ledge of the hose right there. But yeah, you can put the clip on first and then push it in when you put them back on. So we'll probably do that once it gets them both out. We'll go ahead and put the clips back on so we don't lose them. All right, we went ahead and put the transmission clips in. There's three grooves. Whoops. I dropped something. 
<coughs> there's three grooves in those little clips. Oh, really? They've got little oh, three yeah. indentions. So you gotta make sure those three indentions go on the oh, three grooves on that. Good. But then we just took the holders out right here and on the other side. And out comes the radiator. And we can put the pins in. There we go. Out it goes. Now we can get those pins in there. And we'll put those pins in there and pull the cam out. I dropped one of your radiator hook pins. We're we'll going to have to go fishing yeah, for stuff down there in a little bit. All right, so we spun the cam. Hopefully the lifters went up. Yeah, Hopefully the lifters. Yeah, just draw all the way back in there so we need that. See, all your loops are up. Oh, and then those two holes there on the outside there where the cam plate went. Put both of those in there. I think that's it. Out. What's the twist thing on the end of those four? The handles don't slide all the way up in there, I guess. Oh, well, it's not going to slide up all the way in there either. Yeah. She's in there. All your loops are up. So you can spin them as you roll, roll the lifter. I mean, roll the cam. It'll uh, help you push. pull it down. That way you know mm -hmm. all the lifters are up. Well, they're exactly the same, so. All right, there you go. Spin and pull, spin and pull. Go ahead. Now it comes the cam. You gotta kind of spin and pull, and then it'll fall down. Come out of the cam bearings and you gotta kind of wobble it back up yeah, into the cam to, bearing. Not try not to ram your bearings. Yeah, yeah, try not to do that too much. That's kind of hard where it's tough. And then you gotta kind of straighten it up, line it back up in the cam bearings and pull through the cam bearing again. Awesome. First time doing it, it's a little tricky, man, but if after you've done it a while, you can pull those out in two seconds. So right now you're stuck on the on the cam bearings on the next lobe. There you go. There you go. But you got to be kind of easy when you pull that through there. You don't want to knock your cam bearings. There you go. It gets easier the further you come out. You don't really got to do like a there full you motion go. either. You can go like back and forth. There you go. You take now once you get so far, you got to take your water pump bolts out of the front of the cam. Which one Oh, you know what? We should already got. We should already had the other cam ready and lubed up to stab. Okay. Oh, this is loose right here. Don't do that. Yeah, kids throwing rocks at vehicles. He's over here on the other side of the vehicle. Go ahead and get the cam out. No. Huh? No. It's too late now. Do we have lube for that cam? Is there lube in the box? I bought some. Oh, you bought some? We bought some. All right. There we go. Cam's out. Pretty. Now we're going to lube the other one up real good. Oh, and we're going to stab it back in there the same way. And the new cam is in. Truck Norris. That worked out pretty good. We didn't check them cam bearings, though, did we? Nope. Oh, well. We're not going to change them anyway. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't we didn't hear anything we didn't hear anything fall so i'm confident all our lifters are still where they should be but we'll know for sure when we put the push rods back in there we go pull those out and then we're going to put a new retaining plate on it so it has a nice sealing surface for that oil passage because if that don't get sealed at the top there you're gonna have your little oil leak. Where is that camera retainer plate? Uh, I don't know. I ain't got it out yet. Where's the old one at? Oh, it's right on the ground behind you. Oh, there it is. So you have to have a good seal on that area, that orange, red, whatever that is. So we just bought a new plate that's got a good seal surface on it. it and we're going. Here's the new one. See, and these bolts already got locked tight in them and everything. Marshall, I'm going to leave these here. Okay. You won't lose them, with you? No, huh? I ain't. I'll never use them again. So, clean up your you surface real good. Make sure that's put a rag on it at least. Yeah. Clean it up. But if I need them one day, Marshall. Yeah, you come anytime you want. Yeah. Okay. People leave their stuff here all the time. 
Heck, I left the floor. Austin brought all his stuff over and left it over here. I no, told him. I can't find none of it. And they should hold the vehicle. Huh? Okay. Well, I'll probably put them on the very top. Yeah, there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anytime. Just come up. We still got to get that engine left and bring it over here. Are you serious? It hit the ground. I heard it. I mean, it kept loose. Yeah, they got it all over me. So. Uh, new camera ring, retaining plate with a new seal. I thought he got locked out on Yeah. New bolts. These bolts are um, star head. Star head. Torque head, I think they're called. But yeah. I got I got some torque head. We're red next. So we're called star heads. I thought it is. <coughs> but uh, yeah, we're gonna put the retainer uh -uh. plate on. What? Line back up the timing marks. Yep. Torque heads. Where you Start putting everything back it? together. No. Everything's going good so far, besides Austin dropping stuff. Mm. Austin's really good at dropping stuff. If I had a football team, he would not be a running back, wide receiver, or tight end. <laughs> so, yeah, if you're really good at dropping stuff, <laughs> don't be like me. Don't try not to be because if that falls down in your oil pan, you're going to be jacking your motor up a little bit and getting the oil pan. Well, I don't know if you have to jack the motor up to get the oil pan off on these or not, but anyway, either way, you're going to be taking the oil pan off to get it out. On a 15 inch barrel, you it, do. If you drop it That's just right, it will go down in the oil pan. Something will go down in there. So no, the only reason I have to be careful with your bolts. Oil pump. I'll change the oil pump. Especially if you change the oil pump. But if you got a, if you change the oil pump and got a long magnet, you should be able to fish them out as long as they don't. Well, if you change the oil pump, in you got to drop your because you can't get your boat out. Oh, you do got to drop the oil pan. You can't get your boat out for your pickup tube. On your car, did you have to? Um, yeah. Raise the motor up any to take the old I, pan off? Yeah, I had to take my motor mounts loose and take it up a little bit. So there you go. But his is a, he's a fifth, he's got a 15 Camaro. He did a cam on it. He had it dynoed at a DK Goodrich. It put down a 494. What yeah. cam did you put in it? Uh, the BTR Stage 4. BTR Stage 4. Uh, Dino tuned at uh, DK oh, Goodrich yeah. and uh, put a uh, 494 horsepower down. It's pretty good, but to the front tires. he turned around and sold it. I wanted to see what it'd do at the drag strip. But yeah, all right, we're just tightening the cam plate up. I don't know what the torque is on this. We'll we'll look that up and Thanks. get everything torqued. 20. All right, so the cam retaining bolts they call for 18 foot pounds. He put it at 20, I think. Yeah, but at 20 gets it. And those got Loctite on them. They, they came with Loctite already on them. See, that's the bad thing about that torque wrench. Sometimes it don't go backwards. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, you got to pull it out of the hole. and. Seems really light, don't it? It does. 18 foot pounds that much, is it? All right. All right. Now you got to put the cam gear in the in the chain. Line, go ahead and line your dial pin up where we where it was before. That way it'll make it easier. Here it is. Here So our dowel pin was at about the three o'clock position. So we're going to go ahead and turn the cam over to get it close. All right, so we got it close that way. When we put the chain and the gear on, it'll make it a little easier. I know y'all can't see probably great from here. Let's zoom in on this. There we go. Put your, put your, put your chain on first. Make sure, lined up. make sure your dot's down. Try to get it lined up. And you don't have to go from the back, son. You can go in the front. There you go. Just try to keep your dot down. Well, once you get it on there, you can kind of snake the chain over top of it to get it lined up. Make sure you don't make sure you don't turn the crank while you while you put it on there. Make sure if you're off a tooth. 
just um, kind of snake the chain over top of the of the gear to, to change it. And then and if you ain't lined up, yep, you just like that. You might move your cam a little bit. Yep. It's hard to line up. Let's see. You got a kink at the top of your chain there. I'm just kind of looking for the dots. There's a one more tooth thing. If it ain't lined up, then you're gonna have to turn the cam a little bit. Take it a little bit. Try to set it straight down without moving it. Try to move it. Nope, no way. They're paying the boat, baby. I can't move it. Just push it down. I think it's able to go down a little bit. Mr. Yeah, see. You just figure out where Actually. You got some slack. That chain will have slack in it a little bit. I ain't got it right there, didn't I? You probably did. <laughs> you that? Now your pin can be in and your bolt holes not be lined up though too I still. Yeah, it looks like you're on. But are the bolts lined up? Where are your bolts at? I don't know. Oh, oh they're in a, oh, the toolbox. Oh, here. Uh, Alright, we're going to line this all up and put the bolts in. You got lucky, Austin. Also, we're going to use um, that what? Um, we're going to use some Loctite on the bolts. Loctite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's that? You sleep one in there. We're gonna put Loctite in there, and then we're gonna tighten it up. But he's got—it looks like he's got it lined up the way it should be. All right, so we got the cam sprocket on. Everything's lined up. You did check your dot to dot and make sure it looked up exactly like it did when we took it off, right? Yep, Strapping down. All right, so we're dot to dot down there. Like six o'clock on the crank. Twelve o'clock or twelve o'clock on the crank. Six o'clock on the cam. And then we're going to torque these down to, it calls for 26, I believe. And we put Loctite on there. And we're just tightening those up. My torque wrench doesn't uh, like to ratchet for some reason. I broke that function trying to use it as a, a regular ratchet. It's still, the torque wrench part works still. So, Yeah, I'd use a regular ratchet. <laughs> Got those tight. I thought I was pretty close. <laughs> But we're going to tighten those down to 26. And then the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to put a rag. Oh, I come the camera off. We're going to put a rag down in there so nothing gets down in there. And we're going to clean the crap out of the timing cover and, and the timing cover and the block where the timing cover goes. We're going to clean that up real good. Put a new gasket on it and resume from there. we we'll knock the seal out. Just cleaning it up. You knock it out from the back. We just took a three-eighths extension and a hammer and just knocked it from the back and it popped right out. We're cleaning that up. We're going to clean the surfaces up here. And then we've already cleaned the surfaces up over here. And we're going to put the gasket back on. We're going to put a dab of RTV in the corners. Right there in the very bottom corners. And then we'll put the gasket on and put it all back together. After we put the seal back in, when you put the seal back in, I just use a, a small two by four and lay it flat on top of it and just hit it with a hammer to beat it down in there. That's the way I do it. But yeah, that's where we're at. I should have got a better um, look at that, but we put uh, our TV in the very bottom corners because the gasket on the timing cover, it ends right at the oil pan. So you gotta have some RTV right at the very bottom corners. And actually we put RVT across the very bottom too. You better tell them about the bolts on the bottom of this thing. And uh, what are you talking about? There's two bolts on the very two bottom. Bolts. Yeah, there's two pan. bolts on the very bottom. Very hard to line up too. That he's putting in right now. Also you seal you want to lube it up, we put Vaseline on it. But uh, we put the gasket on, dab RTV in the very bottom corners, and now we're going to put all the bolts back in it.
and then we can put the uh, balancer flywheel back on. Moving right along. But yeah, y'all, when y'all take this timing cover off, there's two bolts that go straight up from the bottom. Those are the ones that need to be tightened up first. And when you take your timing cover off, don't forget those bolts and then think you got to force your timing cover off because that thing's aluminum and you will crack it. But, um, yeah, they're right there. I told you, Austin is really good at dropping stuff. I mean, he's like a pro at it. <laughs> if there was a competition for such a thing. <laughs> but, yeah, them two bottom oil pan bolts that hold the timing cover to the oil pan, those are the ones you want to tighten up first. And then you do the rest of them, which we put two of them in already just to line everything up. But uh, we'll get those tightened up. And actually, we put our TV across the very bottom, all the way across the timing cover, too, because just to make sure that seals. Huh? All right, so when you put the bolts in your timing cover, get them all lined up first, but don't okay. tighten them. You know, just get them started because sometimes you have to maneuver the gasket in and out for the bolts to line up. But again, tighten your bolts that go straight up from the bottom to the oil pan to the timing cover first. And then um, do a crisscross pattern when you when you tighten the timing cover bolts up. And I, I do it in two waves. I do a light little crisscross pass and then I do the second pass and tighten the rest of the way up. But, but yeah, definitely get those hands started because you might have to push in and out on the gasket on the, on the side of the timing cover there to get them to line up. If you tighten one of them up, the gasket don't want to move as much. So, yeah, we'll get this torque down. I'll look up the torque specs on this. All right, we're putting the balancer back on. We just found a big bolt to stick in there just to get it started because you got to get it started a little bit before that other tool fit. Where's your crowbar? That, that puller balancer can fit on there so easy. It, I mean, pulled off so easy and comfortable just using the, the bolt just to push it back on. Shoot, you can probably just use the stock bolt to push it on. It wouldn't fit. Like, it's too short. Too short? Yeah. So, yeah, we're just using a longer bolt to get it started first. I'll show you what the bolt looks like when we... When we get it out of there, but we stuck that tire iron in there. You see it? It's not moving. It's up against the cross member. I know we'll get tight quick if it bottoms out. There it goes, pushing it on. Once we get it so far, we can probably just use the stock bolt to push it the rest of the way on. Oh, I'll take it out anyway. Get the stock on the foot now. But uh, that tool you have, it should have another fitment to push this on, does it not? But anyway, like I said, that balancer and puller, it came off easy. That's uh, actually the easiest one I've ever seen come off. But again, this first time I've messed with LS, I'm usually messing with small block Chevy. And see, and these, these aren't keyed, just like an LT1 Gen 2. They're not keyed, but even when I took the one, take them off my Gen 1 L, LT1, Gen 2 LT1, I guess, I don't know, I've always had a problem getting those to come off. <laughs> and there's, you definitely have to use a, a puller with the pin that goes down in the crank hole because on those, the, the balancer covers the front of the crank up and it just exposes the hole. So you got to have something to stick down in the hole. Because if you push, try to push right on the front of it, you're just going to be pushing on the front of the balancer and pulling on the balancer and just fighting against yourself. But, but again, the, the, this one ain't keyed either. It just it goes on anyway. You just push it on. All right, so that's the big bolt we was using. Got to use it still to get it started. It wants to start, but not enough for that yeah. one. And we don't have enough meat, so we're going to put some washers back on this big bolt. We're trying to use a stock bolt now. The stock bolt still 
I ain't reaching. Yeah, if it's just barely reaching, don't trust it. You'll strip the threads out of the front. So we're going to put some more washers on that bigger bolt and see if we can't push it up there just a little bit further. Far enough for the stock bolt to engage real good. And then we'll just use the stock bolt to push the rest way on. That's where we're at. We'll get this pressed on and uh, we'll put the water pump back on. All right, so we're putting the rocker arms and push rods back in. We're just going to snug them up for now. And um, there's an easier way to do this if you do it before you put the timing cover on. You can um, you can do one and six with the dots lined up, and then you can turn it 45 degrees, and you can do two more cylinders, and then turn it 45 more and do two two more cylinders, etc. But um, we've already got the timing cover on. So what I'm going to do is the the firing order on a four-stroke en engine is intake compression power exhaust intake compression power exhaust so i'm gonna watch the exhaust come up and close and i'm gonna watch the intake come up and close and then we'll turn it just a little bit more that way we know those two are on the base load and then we're going to torque those to 22 pounds and then we'll go to the the next set of rocker arms i want to start in the middle and then we'll do the outside ones i don't i'm not sure if it matters but We'll, um, we'll start with three, and then do five, and then do one, and then do seven. And the cylinders are front to back, yeah, one, three, five, seven, seven on this side, driver's side. And then on the passenger the side, there. they're two, four, six, eight. The water pump loose, but uh, we're going to get these torqued down. Corrosion, huh? And then we'll put the water pump on, the radiator. And then All right, and you can tell which one of these are exhaust. See, there's the exhaust port. There's the exhaust port, so that's the exhaust rocker. There's the exhaust port, there's the exhaust rocker. So the exhaust to come up and close, and then the intake, actually the intake start this opening before sucks. this one closes. And then it'll come up and it'll close. And then we'll turn it over just a little that's bit more. And both of those will be on the base circle. Then we'll torque both of those. And then we'll, we'll do that one, three, five, and then one and seven. And then we'll do the other side the same way, and that'll be it for that. All right, we got them all snug, and then Austin's going to go ahead and start turning it over, and I'm watching for this exhaust oh, this, valve. This one, yep. this one's coming up. See, right this now. one started closing. All right, or opening. You, you, I'm sorry. You, you do this side. This you know up. No, yep. I need. Well, I need to watch up. it the whole way. Just, just keep going. We'll do it in order. Okay. See the exhaust now it's gonna hit open now. It's gonna close now the intake's gonna start see there oh, it goes close. and then the intake Keep on I'll tell you when it's gonna open now. It's gonna start to close and then slow down Just turn it a little Right there oh so now we're gonna do this one number three and then we'll do five, and then we'll do one, then we'll do seven, and then we'll go over to the other side and do the same thing. And we're gonna do 22 foot-pounds. And that's how we're gonna do those, and we're gonna do all eight of them, and then call that done. All right. So now we're just putting the plugs in, I guess the gap, stock gap 60, so that's where we put them at. Got the rocker arms all snug down. So that's where we're at now. Now just put a, I guess he's going to go ahead and do the valve covers and the coils and the plug wires. We can't do those. Plug wires, yeah, it's not here. Oh yeah, someone had to go we'll get his plug wires. First. He bought plug wires, but he left them at his house. He lives about I left them in my car. 20 miles away in his car. That I had over here. Plan on taking them out. But yeah. See Got new plugs in her. I don't know what he's going to do next. Austin's doing all the work. Me and Tyler are the uh, are the brains. <laughs> We're helping here and there. Don't. Sound stupid. <laughs> well, me and Tyler work on cars more than you, and you're still learning the stuff. So, but Austin jumps in there, son. He gets it done. <laughs> We're also going to clean the throttle body. This is dry by wire, and it's pretty filthy. miles. Yeah. I know when my Eaton has got all clogged up it the it idle it go whoa, whoa. 
and then it'd quit sometimes. And I cleaned that out, so I ain't never done that since. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, almost there. And this is the piston stop we used to make sure we was on top dead center. This part I'm spinning, this part right here, screws down in the spark plug hole. And then you can adjust the length how far this sticks in, which helps. Because like if you're setting, um, setting up a balancer on a small buck Chevy, you just want it to barely hit because that way you don't have a... You barely hit one way and then you turn it back the other way and barely hit the other way and that way you don't got a huge distance you got to measure between for the middle for top dead center but on this ls truck we actually had to have this we barely had to have it screwed in when we did the small block chevy but on the 5.3 we had to screw this all the way in for it to even hit the piston but yeah that's what we used to um to find top dead center on each cylinder before we you know went to take the valve springs off put that in the spark plug hole this part hits the piston turn it over by hand and then you know the pistons at top dead cylinder on that cylinder and you take the valve springs off but yeah that's the tool we use just called piston stop they're like 10 bucks 10 15 bucks and Austin's put on the water pump it's got the valve covers on I <laughs> still need to do the cools and the spark plug wires. No, we'll get plug wires. I mean, never mind. You said you said that. Need to put them all in them. No, I thought you said Just make sure you clean your surfaces up on the motor and on the water pump. Some of them have these little rubber seals you got to pull out. Don't lose the weight, but yep. Water pump's going on both first. Or next. First, uh, line her up, stick her on. Get the bolt started. And we gotta put the radiator in. It's the only thing left yeah, after we get far. this tightened down is the radiator, the belts. Radiator hoses and heater hoses, coils and wires, and should be ready to start up. Moving right along. Only thing that fought us was a crank bolt, and uh, I don't even think we needed those rods. The lifters stayed up all by themselves. Good insurance, though. Yeah, good insurance. Yeah, we had to actually push them down to put the rocker arms on. They 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 stayed up. We had to push them down when we put the rocker arms on. Every one of them was still up. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put the air conditioner belt on. It's got a tensioner on it. It goes on the very back of the pulley. And then you just tighten the tensioner up, flip it up. And if you ever get confused how to write these belts, the pulleys will tell you. So see like this. The groove side goes down. <laughs> On those, the flat ones, the flat side goes up against it. So, so we're going to put the belts on now. It's good. I think I was definitely predicting it. I use a wrench on those, man. It's so much easier to use a wrench on, on the pulleys when they do that. You can get a wrench on this one. This just got a spot for the 3 8 drive ratchet. Oh, it's just got a 3 8 head, so it don't have a yeah. bolt. I got you. Yeah, take it off your AC. I should be doing like this now. But uh, anyway, you route the belt, and then you this the tighten up. The, you the go like you're tightening the pulley, or most of them anyway. And that turns the pulley around, turns the tensioner around, the pulley tensioner around. Then you flip the belt over on top of it. Or this one's kind of tight and couldn't get the tool in the tensioner. See how he's tightening it, and it goes down. Put it on your AC. Then put it on. Then you loosen it back and the tensioner pops back up to the belt. Yeah. You got all you're your off AC. you're off on the crank too. Yep. There you go. Make sure you're all lined up. Yeah. 
Now you're not on the AC pulley. There we go. And I'm off over here again. Gotta get on the crank too. There we go. Looks like you're on now. On now. Now we're gonna put the uh, accessory belt on, power steering, and the alternator, and the water yeah. pump. Yeah. All right. We got the alternator, power steering, water pump pulley on. We did have a little bit of trouble figuring that one out, so that's the way it routes. It comes off the crank, all the way around the water pump. It comes around the crank, all the way around the water pump down around the power steering pump up around the alternator around your tensioner or around the idler pulley. idler pulley and then the tensioner there's your tensioner that's the one you tighten up to loosen the belt to get it on but that's the routing what why is it leaking like and now we're going to stab the radiator down in here what's your bottom a little tight fit uh, it is, it's right there in the way, too. Oh, there we go. It's fell in there now. Now it goes in the little slots in there, little round things. I got my side in. There's a little grooves. There's a rubber hole over there for the drain, I believe. And then there's like a little groove over here it went in. And then we we'll put our bolts back in on both sides. Put the clips in. We already put our clips in, so now all we got to do is push the transmission lines in. Tyler's on that now. There you go. You push it in, and then you just put the plastic back over it. Push that one in. We already had the locks in it. And then push the plastic back over the lock. There we go. Transmission lines are done. And then we'll run the hoses, tighten the hoses up, and then we can put the the shrouds on, the shroud and the radiator. Shroud, yeah, radiator shroud back up. And uh, yeah, we're almost done. We're waiting on spark plug wires though. He bought some spark plug wires and left them in his other car and somebody went and got them. But we can still put the cools on. We gotta get the radiator hoses ran first. And that radiator hose comes way over here. <laughs> and I hate these. I usually always take these off and put screw clamps on, but they're, they're it's kind of pricey though because these these big ones are three to five dollars each. The little ones you can get like a three pack for like five bucks, but you got the heater hose and the over and the, yeah the heater hose and the main inlet from your fill tank over there goes down here then your bottom radiator hose goes there see those go to you these go to your heater hose right there and then that one goes to your fill tank but um we're just hooking all those back up there's two heater hoses one goes in the back and then one of the heater hoses oh, goes is on, there? on no, this one, like it goes to the reservoir. Oh, and the bottom hose goes there. The radiator the bottom hose, hose goes there. This top hose comes way over here. So we're going to pick all that up. All right, we got the cools, spark plug wires, intake, radiator, everything's back in. Let's see if it'll start. Watch the battery be dead. It looks like it. Looks like you got it all. Got all the hoses hooked up. Did you check the oil? Everything look good there? Watch the battery be dead. I hear some rocker noise. But I don't think that'll adjust itself. Maybe it'll maybe it will pop up, I don't know. Yeah, it's one of 
surge a little of idle. If it gets warmed up and goes into closed loop, it'll sound better too. Yeah, but it's got a little lope to it. He's got something loose on his exhaust. Was your exhaust end up there or what? some valve train noise from this side it's usually best to do lifters on these and replace your crank bolt <laughs> but we use the same crank bolt and the same lifters so we change the lifter you got to take the heads off that's what sucks about an ls gen 1 gen 2 small box chevy lt1 you don't have to do that you just take the intake off hold on but um we're going to try a different torque wrench on this side because i don't know how much i trust the torque wrench that we used there's also going down on that one just whichever one you see the intake come up, close and then come up, and we'll do that one. But we're going to retorque these. We let it run up enough to bleed the lifters up, see if it'd go away, but it didn't go away, and it's definitely on this side. So, see if we can get rid of that, hopefully. All right, there we go. We used a different torque wrench. Sounds good now. Yeah, let's do it. It's hitting. Got a definite lope to it. Everything sounds good now. Just gotta bleed the air system a little bit. And um, that's it. That's it, truck door scam. Yeah, it sounds good now. It's gone. Yeah, this has got a good lope. I like it. What do y'all think? Truck North. Got a good lope to it. Now I'm gonna do some tuning on it. I ain't the best tuner at all, but uh, I'm pretty sure I can tune this. But yeah. Got a good lope to it. Valve train sounds good now. Nope. Sounds great. That's it right there, man. Oh, there's the cam install on a 5.3, guys. And um, we'll get some more videos of um, rebuilding this LT1 we got sitting over here. And it's going to go in this, um, it's going to go in this Camaro over here. We're going to go with the Tick Performance cam on that. And then, um, my son will be posting a video of him doing the WS6 he's got, 2002, I believe. He's doing a tick cam on it. The Street Heat 2. And then uh, I'm going to do a cam on this one. We're going to send the heads and intake out for porting. We're going to get a nitrous cam. Because uh, the cam says it's only good for a 200 shot. And that's about where we're losing mile prior. Anything past 200 shot. The heads say they're good whatever the carburetor says it's good for a 350 shot and the intake i know it's good for whatever shot but i think what's holding this one back anything over 200 shot is the cam so we're going to put a nitrous cam in it port the heads and intake and yeah but that's the videos coming up oh also this one's getting the roll cage uh, i'm going to try to learn to weld and we're going to put this roll cage in it so some, that's some of the videos we plan on doing in winter time. But um, I hate cold, so if it gets below 30, you won't see me out here working on nothing. But anyway, yeah, this one needs adjusted on the idle for sure. But we're going to tune on it a little bit. 
get the air out of it, out, air out of the cooling system, and yeah, good to go.